Hello and welcome to the Sciences video. So far we have learned about the term machine learning, its underlying concepts and most important, how PyME Imperial serve as an excellent tool to provide synthetic data sets for ML based application. Now let's explore the process with an example of creating data sets using robust techniques in PyME Imperial. Ready? Let's get started. In this age of rapid technological development, the screens have become an integral part of our lives. Whether used for operating machinery, kiosks, ATMs, and of course, smartphones, we rely heavily on them. There are various kinds of touch screens, and for this video example, let's consider a pressure based touch screen. Also known as force sensitive touch screen, they offer an enhanced level of user interaction as compared to the traditional ones. These are designed to sense and diagnose the varying degrees of pressure applied by the use of fingers or by stylus. Apart from consumer products, these touch screens have gained a significant use in the industrial sector. They usually serve good fits for consoles in CNC machines and on manufacturing lines. These touch screens have a significant value in the industry for the benefits they offer, like precise control, enhanced user feedback, glove friendly application durability and reliability. Pressure based touch screen employ various methods of sense and measure the pressure applied to the screen. Amongst the several methods used, capacitive pressure sensing and resistive pressure sensing are the two widely used forms. The capacitive pressure sensing touch screen utilizes similar underlying technology as capacitive touch screens but incorporates an additional layer of pressure sensitive elements. When pressure is applied, the capacitance of the touch screen gets altered at the location and touch controller detects and measures this change to determine the pressure level. In the resistive pressure sensing touch screen, which is the example we are using in this lesson, the touch screen consists of multiple layers with two conductive layers separated by a spacer. When the subject to pressure, the circuit is closed due to the contact between the layers, resulting in voltage drop. This helps to detect the location of the touch. In this lesson's example, the touchscreen capacitor layer is replaced by strain gauges underneath the top layer. Strain gauges are the sensor that measure the strain or change in deformation of an object. For those of us coming from a more AI ML background, let's quickly define deformation and strain. The measure of change in shape due to load can be termed as deformation. For example, if we apply load to this 1 meter bar, and it gets elongated in x direction, say by 10 mm. And here we say that the bar got deformed by 10 mm along the x axis. Strain is a unitless parameter, which can be used to quantify deformation. It gives the value of deformation relative to the original size along the direction of deformation. For our bar, a simple strain definition could be calculated as change in length in x direction divided by the original length in the x direction. The strain is usually indicated by the Greek letter epsilon and is thus 0.01 in our case. For more information on strain, please check out the ANSYS innovation course on mechanical strain in deformation analysis. In context of our touch screen, a small set of strain gauges can be embedded in the screen to detect the amount of pressure applied by the user. This pressure causes the screen to deform slightly, which can be measured as strain at the embedded location. Once the strain data is obtained in the digital format, a machine learning algorithm can be employed to process and interpret this data, giving back the location and amount of force applied. Thus, an ML algorithm needs to be designed and trained to learn from the patterns and characteristics of the touch input. For this, you can use the finite element analysis to simulate touch interaction on a screen and generate digital data from these physical actions quite effectively. And with PyME PDL, we can perform this simulation for a wide array of inputs. To achieve this, we first need to generate a set of inputs, which in this case would be the different location of the touch on the screen. Then we need to simulate touch actions at the location. And since touch on the screen is just a load applied at the point, this can be defined in a FEA model. Finally, we need to solve the model for every set of inputs and generate output data set for training the ML model. In the next lesson, let's create the finite element model in PyMePDL. Hope you find this lesson informative. See you in the next lesson.